Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about reapplying to med school. If you're new here, welcome. I am a dermatology resident and I make videos to give advice to anyone who's thinking about or currently training in medicine. All advice is based on my own life experiences. So today I'm going to talk about reapplying to med school, which is something that I did. If you haven't checked out that video yet, make sure to check out the video where I discuss my non-traditional journey to medicine. I mentor a lot of students and I noticed that there are many mistakes that pre-med students are making when they are trying to reapply. So I'm going to list out four common things that I want you guys to look out for when you are reapplying so that on your reapplication you are getting in on that next round. So my first tip is to determine your weaknesses and what that means is figure out what in your application was weak. Was it your MCAT score? Do you need to sh strengthen your MCAT? Is it your grades? Do you need to think about taking a special master's program or a post -bac? Is it your research or your volunteer? Do you need a little bit more time to have dedicated and consistent research and leadership or volunteer experiences? Um, if that's the case, you're really gonna have to make a timeline on how to fix how to fix that. And then what about if you actually got interviews but you did not get in despite those interviews? Well, maybe it's your interviewing skills. If you got interviews and didn't get into med school, it's okay to reach out to those programs to determine what you were lacking so you can work on that for your next application. So for example, when I reapplied, there were certain things that I knew were weak in my application. So one, I did retake the MCAT. Um, I also had lower, lowish grades. So I did to do an SMP program where I got 4.0. I did not have much clinical experience at the time of applying my first time around, but my second time around, I had been a scribe multiple times. I shadowed doctors and I even did a mission trip to Haiti. So I had a lot more clinical experience at that point. So you really need to figure out what you were weak in so that you can make your application so much stronger the next go. Now that leads into the timeline, right? When you figure out what is what you're weak on, you want to make a realistic timeline on how you can significantly improve that. And notice that a lot of pre-meds, when they're reapplying, they're like rushing for the next application cycle. But you really need to ask yourself, how much can I get done by the next application cycle? So if you can't get your application to be very competitive by the next application cycle, it's okay to take another year. Set realistic goals and a set realistic timeline so that you're putting in all of your effort at a pace that you can succeed at. That is the main takeaway I want you guys to get from that, that you want to have a pace that you can succeed at and have an application that is significantly improved from your last application. My third tip is mentorship. You need mentors. When I first applied, I actually did not have mentors. But the second time applying, I did obtain mentors. Get yourself mentors because they're going to help you identify weaknesses. They're going to help you create and or maintain a, a timeline that can help you achieve your goals. They can help you with interviews. They can help you with personal statements. You want to have people that can help guide you along the way. What a lot of people don't say is that medicine, it's challenging to get into, but the thing is that when you have someone in the field that's able to guide you in the right direction, your chances significantly increase in your ability to get into medical school because you have someone who knows what it takes to get into medical school and they will help guide you through that path. So mentorship is key, key, key. Do not be afraid to ask for mentorship. And last but not least, what I realized that a lot of pre-meds are not doing is applying wisely. So when I was applying, they always say, you know, do reach schools, schools that you don't think you'll ever get into, but you never know, and do a safety school. That's fine that you can do like one or two, two reach schools or whatever it is. But the thing is that you want to increase your chance of getting into med school. So you want to apply to programs that seem like they will take you. You want to thoroughly read through the program's mission statements, the um, stats of the program, what they're looking for in a med school, what the average class um, look, demographics looks like, like 
what states are they coming from? Is the school really only favors their own um, their own state residents? You know, you want to see like what was the, their average MCAT? Are they heavy in research? And then your application is really lacking in research. You want to pay attention to that because you, like I said, you want to increase your chances of getting into medical school. So definitely, definitely, definitely review the programs and apply to programs that you are more likely to go into. So for example, if you are a weaker applicant in some areas, if you don't really have that much research, but your application is strong in which you've done a lot of clinical experience, you've done volunteering, but maybe your grades aren't as great, your MCAT is maybe a little bit weaker, definitely look for the programs that talk about choose candidates based on a holistic approach. If you are interested in primary care, your personal statement is all of our primary care and um, working in rural or underserved communities, make sure that the program that you're applying to is focuses on that. You know, so so that is what is definitely going to change the likelihood of you being successful on your next application round. So, like I said, I definitely reapplied. And when I reapplied, I really first, when I did not get to, into med school the first time, I definitely had to sit back and like really um, figure out how I was going to have a game plan that will lead to success. For me, my game plan was going into a special master's program which I thought and I always say that it was like helped change my life because I felt very supported there. They had a pre -med, they had a pre med advisor who was also very supportive there compared to when I was in my undergrad. Um, and the, that was the person who actually helped me form a game plan um, to be successful. So I was already in the uh, master's program. I was very serious about my work. Make sure you check out my program, my video on how I got a 4.0 in that program. And then I just was trying to figure out how else I can improve my application. Um, and then she's the one who recommended like how I can reach out to people to for to shadow. Then I got a, a med school mentor while I was there, and she helped me reach out to these physicians so that I can get mentored. But I can be I can shadow them. Um, I made sure that I took time off to actually work and, and get the, the clinical experience that I was lacking. So I ultimately took three years off between undergrad and med school, but I ultimately got into med school. And I know a lot of times when you get that rejection, you're like, it feels like everything is over, but I promise you it's not. And I know thinking about what you need to do to reapply and to be competitive also might feel overwhelming. And I know that feeling. But I'm here to tell you that today I am a dermatology resident and that time feels like forever ago. It passes. The times I cried about not being able to get into med school, the times I was so frustrated that it just feels like felt like everything was going slow. It felt like everyone around me was being was achieving their goals and I was not. It passed because at the end of the day, I, I focused on what I needed to do to get the job done. And you can too. But Take these tips, watch my other videos um, about, you know, just getting into medical school. And if you have any questions, let me know. I love chatting with you all. If you guys give me topics to talk about, I'll definitely make sure to do that. And if this video is helpful anyway, make sure to like, my, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, and put that bell ring on so you know every time I'm dropping these gems. It was nice chatting with y'all and I'll see you at my next video. Bye!